بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على عبده ورسوله الأمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته The life of our Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was always in continuation of working for the sake of Allah. It all started when he was revealed to for the first time by the Archangel Gabriel delivering the message of Allah. And Allah Azza wa Jal instructed him that, oh, wrapped in your blankets, stand up and deliver the message of Allah Azza wa Jal. And when Khadija, may Allah be pleased with her, called the Prophet Sallallahu to come and sleep, he told her, the time of sleep, my beloved Khadija, has gone. Now it's all time, the only, the only time remaining is to call people and to work for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. After the battle of Khaybar, and after the truce has been signed with the polytheists of Quraysh in what was known as the agreement of Hudaybiyah or the truce of Hudaybiyah after the Prophet ﷺ utilized all his efforts to conquer and subdue the Jews around Medina one would think that it's time for him to rest but this was not the case on the month of Sha'ban, the eighth month of the Islamic calendar, on the eighth year of Hijrah, the tribe of Bani Bakr assaulted the tribe of Khuza'a. And just as a reminder, one of the items in the Treaty of Hudaybiyah, in the Truce of Hudaybiyah, was that whoever enters in alliance with the Prophet ﷺ, any attack against him would be an attack on the Muslims. And whoever enters in the alliance of the polytheists of Quraysh, mm. any attack on that tribe would be considered as an attack on the people of Quraysh. Now Khuza'a, immediately after signing this agreement, went into the alliance of the Muslims and the Prophet yeah. and Banu Bakr went in alliance with Quraysh. the people of Quraysh. Before this, they had tens of years of history in bloody feud among mm -hmm. them. So, just when they thought it was safe for them, because they were in the alliance of a strong power, Banu Bakr thought of it as the chance for them to avenge the old dead, the deads and the old uh, uh, battles that was or that were with them or between them so on the month of Shaban in the middle of the night the tribe of Banu Bakr assaulted the tribe of Khuza'a while they were at a water by the name of Watir they were close to a well as you know that the Arabs usually traveled as nomads and they used to set camp next to Water, water uh, wells, and, 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 and oasis. And oasis. Oh. So they were close to this oasis or this well by the name of Watir. They raided them while they were asleep. So they had taken them by surprise. They slaughtered 20 of them. And the tribe of Khuza'a woke up in fear and terror. They went immediately to... Mecca, because it was known to be the Haram, no. the sacred area. So Arabs, even though they were not Muslims, they considered the Haram area, the forbidden area, from launching attacks. So they even went to the Kaaba itself. And the tribesmen of Banu Bakr told their chief that yeah, Nawfal, this is the Haram, and this is your God. These are your gods. 
And Naufal said a very strong word. He said, no gods today. Today we avenge our deads from the tribe of Khuza'a. So mm. they kept on fighting this tribe. Where? In the Haram. No. And they were aided by the polytheists of Quraysh. Okay. Banu Bakr, the, 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 the polytheists of Quraysh, supplied Banu Bakr with weapons. They supplied them with slaves. And some of them actually contributed to the fights physically mm. and among the dignitaries of Quraysh. So one of the tribe of Khuza'a uh, went to the Prophet ﷺ, Amr ibn Salim al-Khuza'i. He immediately went to Medina. Mm. Of course, those who were attacked by the Haram, they went to the house of Budayl Bud Bud ibn al-Warqa, al-Khuza'i, who was uh, one of the dignitary, and to another man by the name of Rafi' seeking, seeking asylum so that no one would attack them. Now, this Amr ibn Salim al-Khuza'i went straight to Medina. And as the habit of Arabs, he said poetry, requesting the assistance of the Prophet والسلام, as he was their main ally. And he said beautiful verses and beautiful lines of poetry that made the Prophet ﷺ tell him and give him the glad tiding that by Allah you were granted victory and I'm coming with you. And this was enough. Now, the Prophet ﷺ, and this is a clear sign of how fair the Prophet ﷺ was with his enemies. The agreement was, if one of our allies was attacked, this gives us a right to consider this agreement broken. as if it was not... Uh, 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 it's see, broken. It's broken, mm. so it gives me the right to go and attack you. Mm. The Prophet could have done this as some easily, but because he was fair and just, mm. he sent a messenger to the people of Mecca, dignitaries of Mecca, giving them three choices. He told them, first choice, get rid of the alliance of Banu Bakr and tell them that you're not allied with us anymore. You're on your own. So we take care of them. Mm. Second choice, you have to pay the blood money to the tribe of Khuza'a for those whom you had killed. And this is fair. Yeah. If you don't like any of the two choices, then it's war between you and us. The answer was very negative. Still, the polytheists of Mecca thought that they had the power to fight the Muslims. They were still defiant, thinking that we're arrogant, we can do whatever we want. And they sent the messenger back with this negative reply. And just as he was leaving, they felt sorry. Mm -hmm. They realized that they had made the mistake of their lives because they had the rec recollection of what took place with the Prophet ﷺ and the Muslims and they found it all to be against them. Yeah. So they thought that, oops, we made a mistake and apparently we're going to pay dearly for it. If you were in their shoes, what would you do? Yes, my Surrender to the Muslims. Well, it's too late now. Mm. So, Muhammad? For me, I'll, I'll try to get hold of the messenger before he go back to the Prophet Wasallam and try to you know, change my mind and tell him that I have changed my mind. That would mm. have been a very good That's, idea, yes. but it was too late. The messenger had arrived in Medina. So the mm. last thing that they could do is to request the Prophet Wasallam to neglect that message and renew the contract yes. again with them, the agreement again, mm. and prolong uh, uh, the truce. So they sent their top dignitary. Mm. They sent Abu Sufyan ibn Harb. Abu Sufyan went to Medina, of course, after he 
sought the uh, uh, the permission to enter Medina because he's our enemy. Mm. And also, this is reported in the books of Hadith that Bilal ibn Rabah and Khabbab ibn Arat, Suhaib al Rumi, and Ammar ibn Yasir, mm. all of these were considered to be slaves at the early time of Islam in Mecca. Mm -hmm. They were sitting and in came Abu Sufyan with the company of someone to protect him. And the story says that they looked at him and said, by Allah, our swords, the swords of Allah did not take what, is, what it should have taken from this man. Mm. We couldn't kill him. And, and they were saying that this was the right moment. Yeah. And they're, you know, uh, they're sorry he was not killed in battle. Now, remember, the man is coming to ask for renewal, renewal of the agreement. Yeah. Abu Bakr ibn Siddiq, Abu Bakr Siddiq, may Allah be pleased with him, was present. And he heard them. And he told them, do you say this? to the top man in Quraysh, in one of the top dignitaries of our tribe, mm. by Allah, I'm going to say that to the Prophet ﷺ. I'm going to tell him what you said. And Abu Bakr Siddiq, imagine now, who was talking? A, a group of companions, com companions who yes. were slaves. Slaves. Yes. And those names, all of them, uh, most of them lost their freedom for a while. Abu Sahib Rumi, he lost all of his money there. They have lost something. Mm. They were all yeah. slaves. They were deprived of everything. Yes. Yeah. So he went to the Prophet والسلام, and he told them, told him what they said about Abu Sufyan. Mm. And the Prophet والسلام, his answer was astonishing. Stay tuned and inshallah after the break I'll tell you what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said. According to the Qur'an, we live in a universe that worships Allah. It is not just human beings who celebrate His praises, but animals as well. Join us every Wednesday at 20 GMT for your show, Even Animals Glorify. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah and welcome back. Abu Bakr, may Allah be pleased with him heard something that was a straightforward insult to the dignitary of Quraysh, Abu Sufyan, mm. a group of the companions who were before enslaved by the pagans, mm. and they themselves were set free by Abu Bakr, Abu Bakr. himself. Yes. He heard them say, by Allah, our swords did not take what it was its own uh, 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 from this enemy of Allah, mm. and they were pointing at Abu Sufyan. So they felt that their swords did not take a taste of Abu Sufyan's blood, yes. and they're regretting this. Mm. Abu, Su Abu Bakr told them, do you say this to the dignitary, the top man, mm. the top brass of uh, 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 Quraysh? Mm. By Allah, I will tell the Prophet ﷺ. So he went to the Prophet ﷺ complaining about what the companions said, mm and thinking that they shouldn't have said this. So the Prophet والسلام, said, Abu Bakr, did you make them angry? By Allah, if you made them angry, Allah is angry with you. Mm. Imagine this amount of respect mm -hmm. to those who are weak mm. and poor, to those who were enslaved. And also this is a footnote, Islam thinks highly of those who are poor and weak. And the Prophet ﷺ told us in the authentic hadith that he told the Muslims, do you think that Allah grants you victory other than because of the prayers of your weak ones? 
Allah does not grant you victory except because of these prayers. So the Prophet ﷺ put it in black and white to Abu Bakr. Mm. Abu Bakr, though you are my closest friend and ally, though you are my beloved companion, though you are the first to enter paradise from my followers, mm. and by far you are the best of them all, yet if you made these four, if you made these companions angry, by Allah, you have made Allah Azza wa Jal angry. Hmm. Abu Bakr immediately, not adding any word or complaint, he went to the companions and said, O oh brothers, have I made you angry? Ask Allah Azza wa Jal for forgiveness for me. And hmm. they immediately, with clean hearts, other people would say that, yes, you made us angry. Hmm. You're talking to us and we're your brothers against this infidel against this enemy of Allah. Mm. They immediately said, we ask and pray Allah Azza wa Jal to forgive you, our brother. Mm. Beautiful hearts, clean, white, and pure. Mm. Abu Sufyan requested an appointment with the Prophet والسلام, and while waiting, he thought of passing by his daughter. And his daughter was Um Habiba. And Um Habiba, as you all remember, was one of the migrants to Abyssinia. Mm. And the Prophet ﷺ sent, proposing to her, to the Najashi, the leader of Abyssinia, and he married her there. And when she came to Medina on the seventh year, a year ago, mm. then she became among the mothers of the believers. Abu Sufyan went to visit his daughter. And she greeted him. And the minute he went into her room, he wanted to sit on the mattress of the Prophet ﷺ. She quickly folded it so that he would sit on the ground. And Abu Sufyan was shocked and astonished. And he said, Daughter, I don't know which one was it. Was it that you thought that this mattress was not clean and honorable for me to sit on. That's why you folded it. Or was it that you thought it was too clean and too honorable for me to sit on? Hmm. Which one was it? I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm astonished. Hmm. So she told him that by Allah, this is the mattress of the Prophet of Allah, oh. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And no way as an infidel, as a pagan, as an idol worshiper, that you would sit on the mattress of the Prophet ﷺ. Hmm. And the guy was shocked. He said, by Allah, nothing good happened to you after you left me. Because is this a way to treat me, hmm. your father, and the top dignitary of Mecca? Hmm. And of course, nothing in her heart was more valuable than the messenger of Allah ﷺ. Hmm. And that's why she migrated to Abyssinia and then traveled from Abyssinia to Medina for the sake of Allah and for the love of Islam. Mm. Uh, can I ask a question? Sure. Uh, how does uh, Islam look on non-Muslims in regards to treatment? Whether it be someone became Muslim, how does he treat his mother, his father, his friends? What is the relationship between us? Well, as you can tell from the seerah itself, mm. that the Prophet ﷺ, he's the best yes. example. Yes. Now, regarding the fathers and the mothers, the Prophet ﷺ had great love to them. Mm. Though he could not have any recollection of his father because he died while he was an infant or yeah. and some say as his mother was pregnant. Mm. And his mother, he could only have little recollection of because she died when he was less than six years old. Mm. And most of his time was in the wilderness where he was breastfed and... Uh, uh, raised by tribes. Yes. It, this is the custom of the people of Mecca. They used to give their children in infancy to be breastfed in uh, 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 the wilderness because the air was cleaner, the environment was cleaner, and it, they would become stronger and tougher. And at the same time, the food is much it's cleaner yeah. and it is best for their Arabic, for their tongue, so that 
their Arabic and their language would be perfect. Mm. So the Prophet ﷺ, despite all of this, had great love for his mother. Mm. And it was reported in the Sahih that he once cried. And the companions, companions asked him, why, why, did you, why do you cry? He told them that I requested Allah the Almighty that I may pray for my mother and ask him for forgiveness. Mm. He deprived me from doing that. Mm. Which meant that she is not from the people of paradise. Oh, she is in hell. Mm. And this is punishment from Allah. Azza wa so this what made him cry because she was his mother. Mm. The Prophet ﷺ also taught us, as was revealed in the Holy Quran, as in Surah Al Ankabut and elsewhere, that Allah tells us that even if your parents struggle and do their very best to make you associate others with Allah, this is a serious offense. Mm. Yet Allah tells you that do not obey them if they ask you to associate others with Allah, mm. yet accompany them in good manners. Mm. Though they're asking you to commit an act of blasphemy to associate others with Allah, don't obey them, mm. but be nice be to, them. to them. It tells us also the seerah that the Prophet wasallam used to treat the non-Muslims in a very nice way. For example, Adi ibn Hatim, and he was the son of the dignitary Hatim al-Ta'i, the most generous man of the whole of Arabia. Mm. He was a Christian, and he was the leader of his tribe. When he came to the Prophet والسلام, the Prophet hosted him in his house. Mm. And he gave him a, a couch to lean on, and this is a form of hospitality. And he received him in a very nice way. The Prophet himself والسلام, used to visit those who were not Muslim and calling them to Islam in a very nice way as he did with the young Jew mm. who used to serve the Prophet وسلم, and got sick. The Prophet visited him and he called him to Islam. The boy looked at his father and his father told him, obey Abul Qasim, the Prophet of Allah, and he accepted Islam. Yes. Yes. The Prophet himself وسلم, used to answer the invitations of non-Muslims mm. as in the uh, case of the wife of Salam ibn Mushkim, the Jew. Mm. She was a Jew herself. She invited the Prophet ﷺ and his companions to a, 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 a feast, to, uh, to a dinner party or a lunch party, and she presented them with a, a, a sheep, but she had poison in it. Yeah. And the Prophet ﷺ got poisoned and one of his companions died because of that. It tells us that Muslims should have equal term. They should treat the non-Muslims mm. in a very nice way, mm. not taking them as allies, mm. not taking them as close friends and buddies, but to treat them as they treat anybody else, mm. in the sense that to have a, 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 a good ethics when treating them. Mm. You, you do not cheat them, you do not lie to them, and you do not misbehave, in the sense that people would think that because they're not Muslims, mm. because they are disbelievers, it's okay for us to beat them, to steal yes. from them, mm. to kill them. Mm. No, it's not. Mm. Uh, the point is that uh, if we say we have the truth, we have the Quran and the Sunnah, we should be an example, so that if they look at us, they want to follow us. But if our example is bad, then they're going to run away from us. It's, it's, it, well, this is also, it has two points to it. Mm. One point is being fair. Yes. Now, if I claim to be a Muslim, but I am a bad Muslim, mm. this should not reflect on Islam. Yes. It's the same thing when I go to Ireland and I see the Catholics and the Protestants fighting and killing each other. It's unfair for me to say that Christianity is a violent religion yes. and all of them are killers. But at the same time, it puts a great responsibility on each and every Muslim, Muslim yes. to be, as some scholars describe it, a walking Quran. Mm. So you should have this in, in you. The way you talk, the way you look, the way you treat others. Because whatever you, you're going to do, it's going to be magnified under yes. the microscope. Yes. So if you say something, if you 
behave in a certain way, everybody is going to misinterpret this yes. and they want to label Islam, Islam of the way that you have done this. Hmm. And if you look at Um Habiba's role in all of this, it portrays to you that she thought and she believed that Islam would always prevail. And that is why she received her father in a very nice way. Mm. She didn't tell him and uh, at the door, leave. Mm. You cannot be here. I don't want to talk to you. You're an infidel. You're a disbeliever. Mm. On the contrary, she accepted him, received him, mm. but he may not sit on the mattress of the Prophet awesome. by no means. Mm. I believe that this is all the time we have for today's program. Until we meet next time, fi amanillah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.